hello my dear learners let's look into some of the mcqs uh, just in the form of a test and discussion which i have thought will be useful for any of the upcoming examinations right so you know whenever we begin let's always remember that challenges are those which actually help us to grow so unless and until you have some challenge you cannot grow so they are just helping you to get prepared for the things you are going to be getting into your life right now the first simple mcq which of the following is used in exocytosis calcium magnesium sodium or potassium definitely when i say exocytosis it becomes your vesicular transport remember vesicular transport is exocytosis and endo cytosis both of these they are categorized as active processes so they are not passive they are active processes and they require important iron that is calcium apart from this they require something which is called as docking proteins right then you require clathrin and you require dynamin so all these things they come into your vesicular transport if you remember docking proteins if are the v snare proteins and the t snare proteins and toxins like your botulinum toxin then your tetanus toxin they basically interfere with the you know functioning of these v snare and t snare and prevent the release of uh, the neurotransmitter and result in the symptoms right so exocytosis again it is of two types constitutive that is non regulated and non constitutive that is regulated where there is processing is your protein hormones where there is no processing or storage is your constitutive next one detachment of myosin detachment of myosin head from actin is caused by so i am speaking about detachment change in troponin c configuration attachment of atp to myosin head binding of adp to an ip2 head or pumping of calcium into sarcoplasmic reticulum so when i say detachment of cross bridges what is the first step will be attachment you know there is attachment of the myosin head with actin and myosin is already hydrolyzed hydrolyzing the atp and it is energized so after this attachment there is power stroke right power stroke and after power stroke the adp and pi are used and as these molecules are used new molecule of atp will get attached so as this new molecule of atp will get attached it is going to bring about allosteric modification between actin and myosin affinity the affinity of actin will be reduced and it will get detached so if there is failure of the atp to be produced like what happens after death if there is no atp you are not going to head get the uh, detachment and there is going to be a uh, rigidity of the body which is formed after death and is called as rigor mortis slow ipsp in autonomic ganglia is generated by a slow ipsp so ipsp and epsp they are examples of the local potentials developing right it is inhibitory postsynaptic and excitatory postsynaptic slow ipsp is caused by muscarinic cholinergic so you can get a fast ipsp sorry a fast epsp that is acetylcholine when it is acting to its nicotinic cholinergic receptors a slow epsp with acetylcholine acting through its muscarinic m1 receptors a late slow epsp gnrh and a slow ipsp by dopamine and norepinephrine right so this similar type of a question can also come to you in the form of a graph the neurotransmitter that is involved in the inner hair cells during depolarization is glutamate 
एसेटाइल कोलिन ग्लाइसिन और गाबा यस सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ग्लूटामेट राइट रिमेंबर uh in the inner hair cells you know how the hair cells are there they have got stercocilia and a big kinocilium like this isn't it always remember that this kinocilia is going to be attached uh, the stercocilia is going to be attached to this kinocilia this is also called as the tip link theory right tip link theory if you come across this word it is with the inner hair cells in your ear here the depolarization is not only going to involve calcium but also potassium in flux and not sodium everywhere else you get sodium so yeah it's not sodium and neurotransmitter is glutamate substance p has all the actions except vasocontraction or that is vasoconstriction axon reflex pain transmission or peristalsis yes so the correct answer is a all these are the actions of substance p except vasoconstriction because it causes vasodilatation <clears throat> the fibers reaching directly to the purkinje cells of the cerebellum arise from which of the following vestibular nucleus inferior olivary nucleus raphe nucleus or locus cerulis so you know that the inputs to the cerebellum right they are of two types you call them as climbing fibers and mossy fibers so the correct answer is b that is inferior olivary nucleus so the fibers that originate in the inferior olivary nucleus they are called as the climbing fibers which so one to one association with the purkinje cells and they cause a prolonged depolarization that is called as the complex spike whereas the mossy fibers these originate from the cell bodies in the spinal cord in the brain stem so the fibers are like spinal cerebellar which terminate on the granule cells and they indirectly influence the purkinje cell they cause a brief depolarization which is just called as a simple spike so the simple spike is actually responsible for the ongoing movement right the ongoing movement but suppose if there is any disparity between the planned movement and the movement that is done then this complex spike brings about the long term depression of these mossy fibers and this actually helps in correction of movements okay correction of the ongoing movements the representational that is also called as the the representational hemisphere is better than the categorical hemisphere at what okay at what options are language function recognition of objects by their forms understanding of printed words or mathematical calculation yes so the correct answer is b that is recognition so the left hemisphere which was initially also called as the dominant hemisphere now it is also called as the categorical hemisphere concerned mainly with language speech mathematical and scientific skills right hemisphere which was initially called as the non dominant hemisphere or the representational hemisphere is mainly concerned with visual spatial relationship identification of objects music right so this is important question the afferent fibers for blood pressure control goes to nucleus ambiguus rostral ventrolateral medulla nucleus tractus solitarius or the caudal ventrolateral medulla so the correct answer is c that is nucleus tractus solitarius all the fibers like the fibers from the 9th and the 10th they are going to first terminate on the nucleus tractus solitarius which will be responsible to modify the activity of the sympathetics and the parasympathetics depending upon whether you have to decrease or increase the blood pressure right so this is all for today hope we catch up soon with new sets of mcqs thank you